Hi, I'm Jeffrey Zeldman. And I'm Eric Meyer. And we're with An Event Apart, and we're here to talk to you about An Event Apart Front End Focus, which starts Monday, the 17th. And I got to say, Eric, I'm really excited to be doing a front end show. Yeah. Uh, front end is where we started our careers, our web mm -hmm. careers. Yeah. And it's also the first few shows we did were basically talking about HTML. Remember when people did that? Talking I, about HTML, yeah. talking about CSS, and yeah. then talking about design. But basically all front end stuff. Yeah. So it just feels great to get back to our roots and have a whole day dedicated to state-of-the-art front-end craft. Yeah, seriously. I mean, I, I remember the first show in Philadelphia, like one of my talks was literally, let me walk through the code of how I did a thing. And one yeah. of your talks was, let me, let me walk through the, you know, the process of designing a thing. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So we're, yeah, it's coming back to that. I'm, I'm excited. So. I'm always very excited. And I'm excited about our first speaker. Uh, design Principles for the Web by Jeremy Keith. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What's bigger than design systems? Like <laughs> big, big design systems are the biggest thing around, but what's even bigger than that? Design principles. Yeah. And who's the best person to talk about that, or certainly one of the best? Jeremy Keith. Now, Jeremy is a terrific speaker. He could probably talk about a phone booth and make it relevant and interesting. <laughs> but, but design principles is as far from a phone bo book as you can get. Right. Did I say phone booth? I meant phone book. Did I say? Yeah, you know. Yeah. You know. It, honestly, I, I thought it worked because Jeremy could would start with a phone booth. He'd be like, here's a picture of a phone booth. And then by the end, he would have like tied it into the entire history, history of how of the, the web internet. developed and Absolutely. like how that makes, you know, how it connects people. And, and everyone would just be like, why am I not anywhere close to that smart? <laughs> he, he, but he's the kind of smart that makes you feel smart. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never sit there, like there's some people who they're sort of in love with their own smarts mm. and they make you feel dumb. Right. Never the case with Jeremy. Jeremy's like, you realize how smart you actually are. I mean, right. that's how I always feel like, I really know more than I thought I did that I just learned. <laughs> yeah. um, the next, next topic is future-proof CSS. Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to this one uh, myself. Uh, so uh, I have uh, the speaker, Ire Adriano Kuhn. Uh, I saw her speak uh, a few years ago uh, uh, at a CSS conference and um, been, been interested in having her uh, speak for us. And this is where it came together, right? We have a front end thing. She does a lot of front end uh, stuff. Um, she comes from, uh, she actually uh, comes from Africa originally. And so she has a, a really, uh, a very grounded perspective on, hey, all this stuff that we do, it doesn't have the same impact in, in uh, places like Africa that it does in the San Francisco Bay Area, right? right? Or in Asia or in Eastern Europe or, you know, Western Europe or whatever. It is just, there are regional differences in the amount of availability of the internet, the way people use the internet. And so she has this, this perspective on using things like HTML and CSS um, that I think is really valuable. And I'm really looking forward to hearing what she has to say about, you know, making CSS that works in those contexts today, but also will be relevant for, you know, decades to come uh, if I you mean, do it right. Future friendly. Future yeah, very, very future friendly. Yeah. That's really cool. And, and I'm actually, uh, the, I like the pairing with Ira um, doing Future Proof CSS as the name of her talk. And then like the next speaker is Una Kravitz doing Modern CSS Tips, tips and Tricks. Yeah. Not, not tricks not uh, tricks and tips or not uh, ticks and trips. That's a, that's a different thing. Um, tips and tricks. Yes. Actually, uh, ticks and trips I got from the Kai's Power Tools three manual they have a they have tips and tricks and then there's one that's ticks and trips that's a, never mind you your bookshelf must be a sight to behold it's i have several <laughs> as it happens I have, but, my bookshelf is now like all my most of my tech and design books are in those boxes which i need to mm. i need to make shelves and right and all will be well yeah um, no i know the yeah, feeling but you is going to be talking about like the new stuff that's been you know been becoming widely supported 
uh, now. So, you know, stuff like min and max and clamp functions as CSS values, like a lot of people, the, those themselves address things that a lot of people have asked for over the years, you know, being able to say things like font size min 10 pixels or 12 pixels or whatever, you know, or 0 0.75 M like set a floor or set a ceiling or combine the two. And that's See, just part of what she's, yeah. And that's just part of what she's talking about. Um, you know, place items, which is super exciting. Uh, and people probably don't know why yet, but you know, will will tell us. So yeah, I can't talks like that always give me new design ideas. Yeah. Because I, I things I'd given up even dreaming of or just thought, well, you don't do that on the web. I love learning stuff that like, oh, you can now. Right. Or you can even do more than you thought. Yeah, it's always it's always interesting to me the way that uh a lot of what we think of as good design or 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 just what web design is, is set by the technical limitations that we operate under, right? Like for a long yeah. time, white space is awesome and, and non-equal height columns are beautiful in part because there was no way to have equal height columns at the time. Right. Um, and so setting things apart with white space became like that was what you could do and it very quickly became that's what you should do. And uh, a lot of the stuff you know is going to talk about is, you know, we'll, we'll break open some of those limitations and where you can say, oh, it's, it's that thing I never could do. Suddenly I can now. How could I use that? So, yeah, that's. That's why I go back and forth. So, I, you know, the designers I work with all code. Um, and I do, although at this point, not very well. Um, but I was talking to it and she was like, do you think it's better she says, I always think about what I could build. Even if I'm not going to be the one building it, I always think about what I could build. And we talked about maybe pretend you don't know anything sometimes and just mm -hmm. see what you come up with just thinking about a layout. Yeah. Because I used to do things like I wouldn't, I would limit how many columns I had in the old mm -hmm. days and stuff because you can't do that. Right. And yeah, we once we figure out how to do something, or when someone makes a tool that lets mm -hmm. a framework that lets everybody easily do something, we all sort of default to it. So I think Yuna's talk will be a way to shake things up and that's really good. Yeah. And they're shaking up and then there's preserving, which is why I'm excited about Henri Helvetica's talk. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Henri has spoken all over the world, but he hasn't spoken for us before. So this is the first time and I'm very excited to see it. Mm -hmm. I've known him online for a long time. He's one of those people that you, you know, he's in discussion groups that you're in. He's on Twitter channels or Twitter feeds or Twitter streams. I don't even know, you know, but yeah. topics I like in Twitter. He's there a lot, contributing meaningfully. Um, but he's going to be talking about what he calls a decade of disciplined delivery. So mm -hmm. it's, I mean, he's a guy who always talks about, uh, web standards, accessibility, capabilities, network speeds, all these different things. And he's going to be talking about how all these come together to do focused performance today because it's, it's not your father's uh, performance or your mother's performance. It's not, it's not your uncle's, let's say, because it's only, but everything that we learned 10 years ago, a lot of that is changing now because of different internet protocols, different ways that servers work. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think he's going to be great at bringing us up to speed and talking about ways to build things. Again, sort of tying back with Ira's talk earlier, building things that will work for many people that are performant, um, that can feel luxurious maybe, but still load appropriately and don't send people away in frustration. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. Yeah. And after that comes, uh, Dave Rupert. Dave? Yeah, Dave talking about uh, unblocking backlog jams with accessibility audits, which um, he actually, uh, having talked to him about this, this grows out of an actual situation he had. And I, and I, from what I've seen, this is reflected in the talk where he had a, um, he, he got this audit, like this list of issues, it's this huge backlog of issues. And so he said, you know, how, how do I get through this? And he's going to 
talk about how he got through that, like what strategies he used um, to make things better for the for the, that situation, but also what he learned to improve that process for the future, like you know even ways of informing the accessibility audit so that it it's more actionable what he gets out of the audit. Um, right, that's the real world. In a perfect yeah. world, you'd get it all right up front. Right. You'd absolutely know what the business wanted to achieve and the business owners would know and nothing was gonna change, the market wasn't gonna change, the customer's needs were never gonna evolve. You'd build the right thing and then you'd all walk away proudly. But it never <laughs> happens that way. Yeah. And accessibility, same. In a perfect world, you work with disabled users, you work with people from a variety of backgrounds, using a variety of tests in every conceivable way, you build appropriately, but in the real world, you inherit something, you're putting together two things and they're both sort of broken in some ways. And so you have all these audits and it can get very demoralizing. Mm -hmm. So just, I mean, talks like Dave's gonna give remind me of the story of, well, when I look at all this junk and think, oh, I'll never clean it up. But the way to do it is to open one box. Right. And I think Dave's gonna have kind of a common sense, don't get overwhelmed by this, right. tackle it. Like that in itself is a job. Tackling the backlog is a job and you can do it better. So I'm, I'm very excited about that because I can get overwhelmed. And yeah. Then, then and Aaron. Then, yeah, and then there's Aaron Gustafson. So Aaron Gustafson's one of the best informed speakers that we have, one of the best uh, informed web standards people I know. He was a leader of the web standards project. He wrote the definitive book on progressive enhancement. He's the editor in chief of A List Apart, the publisher of web standards Sherpa, a uh, tireless web standards evangelist at Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, I, he's a great web developer. Uh, I've had the pleasure to work with him, but even more importantly, he's just a very, very well-informed speaker about how the convergence between inclusive design, uh, uh, progressive enhancement, accessible development, how all these things work together and how they intersect with performance like with Henri, and how they intersect in the new multi-device, both high-end and low-end. Right. Like, we're, we have to make stuff that's gonna work for your belt buckle, right? right? And it's gonna work on a 20-year-old device, and it's gonna work on, it's gonna work on the computer that, uh, that, that someone has at a public library that's maybe five years out of date, and it's gonna work on a super, you know, the new, the new, power, whatever. Right. So I think, again, it, the whole day, really, it's a great way to wrap the whole day mm -hmm. because front end design and development is really experience design. Every right. decision about like, can I cut three lines of code? Can I, can I do this with fewer calls to the server? Whatever the case may be, you're shaping the experience for people. And I yeah. think it's going to be a great day for this with old and new speakers. Yeah. On our, our, some of our favorite topics. So, yeah. I'm like you, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to what I'll learn. And, and you're going to be doing interviews with all the speakers live, live, right? That's true. After each talk uh, concludes, there will be a live Q and a uh, sort of an interview style with me and, and the speaker where we, you know, I, we collect questions from attendees, during the talks and I, I put those to the speakers and right because there's a whole channel for that we, yeah we got a little chat window next to the next to the uh talk as it as it progresses as, right as the talk unfolds people are yeah. going to be real time posting questions and then hopefully we get to them all during these q and a's yeah. which are kind of a another high point for me just the relaxed fun way that you mm -hmm. you and right. the speakers let your hair down what right. well what what there is down and uh right yeah no it uh, i think it's gonna it's gonna be a great day it's gonna be a great day and we hope to see all of you there or some of you there and uh we'll keep doing this and we hope some of you will keep coming awesome so see ya <laughs>